bad. He's finished? Verse 19. Go ahead. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. I can't wait to get to that verse. And verse 20. I suspect <laughs> that this valley has yet to see what God can do through a body of believers fully yielded to Him. If we desire to be a church that is effective and effective for Christ, we must be a people of holy. <coughs> we can devise all kinds of games, gimmicks, <coughs> gadgets to attract people. But God wants us to be holy like Him and be holy like Him. You ever wonder why we so often limp along spiritually, licking our wounds and longing for victory? Why we so often are stagnant or settled in mediocrity? in things of Christ. Perhaps it's because we lose our passion for holiness. And it's that passion that I want to call us to. Holiness is a divine imperative. Holiness is a divine imperative. Well, maybe I'll call your attention to it. Holiness <coughs> has to do with the heart. 635 times. Not quite dry. 635 times I usually don't sit. The word in the Greek for holy is mentioned. Sanctified, sanctification, holy are terms that are used in the same Greek word. Holiness has to do with the heart. The heart is the center and the focus of our interpersonal being. Holiness is something that starts on the inside. It's the source of our motivation. It's the seed of passion. It's the spring of all thought processes. And particularly of the conscience. Holiness starts inside a person with a right purpose that seeks to express itself in a right performance. Holiness starts inside a person with a right response, right purpose that seeks to express itself in a right performance. It is a matter not just of the notions that I go through or the motions I go through, but of the motives that prompt me to go through them. That's so essential. A holy person motivation and aim and passion and desire and longing and aspiration and goal and drive is to make money. To be famous. To build a legacy. No amens. No grunts. It's to please God. My very existence as a Christian has one purpose, and that is to please God. What if every single Christian, quote, in the world, their aim was to please God? Both by what he does and by what one avoids doing. 
In other words, one practices good works and cuts out the evil ones. Good works begins with praise and worship and honoring and exalting God as the temper of one's whole walk life. It's his temper. That's who he is. It's obvious. It's obvious who he is. It's obvious what his, his aim is. He speaks of Christ 90% of the time. He wants to promote Christ. He loves Christ. He acts like he loves Christ. Even if he doesn't mention Christ, you know that he loves Christ. His being flows out of a love of Christ, not himself. Evil works. Neglected and coolness with regard to them. So I must labor to keep my heart actively responding to God. That's holiness. Puritan writer Richard, Richard Baxter said, Heart work and heaven work make up my books. My heart work, Baxter meant, cultivating the spirit of gratefulness, humble, Adoring love to one's divine love and Savior. Holiness is always the saved sinner's response of gratitude for grace received. Number two, holiness has to do with my temperament. When someone describes my temperament, How do they describe it? My, you know, I need this lesson about every two or three months. This is not something you can lay down and not pick up for a while. It's something that you need to keep in your forefront of your heart and your mind. My temperament, I mean that factor, facility that makes specific ways of reacting and behaving naturally to me. My temperament is that which I react naturally. It's just natural for a person that is practicing holiness. That it just comes out. He doesn't have to think about it. It's just him. Situation, <coughs> people. In the way I usually do. Emotionally, stimulation, customary strength, and the speed of my response becomes natural, which is to say temperament is the raw material out of which temperament is formed. Character is what we do with our temperament. Personality is the final product, the distinctive individuality that results, the distinctive personality of a person is a person who expresses naturally a genuine love for the things of God and to honor God. It's naturally. You are normally, you do what you, you are natural what you do. Most of you just can flip off at any time, do anything you want to, because it's natural for you to be that way. You just respond that way. It's your nature to respond that way. You need to respond Christ-like that way. We all have our temperaments. Our positive, our negatives, our ease, our difficulties, our introvert, our extrovert, outgoing, withdrawn, active, positive, passive, giving, taking, talking, <coughs> sociable, shy, quick, slow, to warm up, stiff, defiance, our flexibility. That's all a part of who we are. The sanguine. What's the, other, what's the other three, Terry? The sanguine, the melancholy, the choric, and the phlegmatic. <clears throat> what I need to say to myself is that I am not to become or remain a victim of my temperament. Well, he's melancholy. Well, he's sanguine. Well, he's, he's you know how he's his choric as an excuse 
of how we behave. What I need to say, I am not going to become what my, what my inward, natural temperament is. Yielding to my temperament, weaknesses is, of course, the most natural thing for us to do. And is therefore the hardest sort of sin for me to deal with and detect. But holy humility, as I see it in Jesus Christ, combines in itself the strengths of all four temperaments without any of the weaknesses. Terry and I have gone through that course too many times. The four temperaments by Tim Lahey. If you learn your temperament and learn the weaknesses and learn the strengths, then you can learn yourself. Regardless of that, what you need to learn, I am not going to fall back on my weaknesses of my temperament and say, well, it's just my temperament. That's not practicing holiness. I must try to be like him in this and not indulge in the particular behavior flaws that people will say, that's just my temperament. And it just comes out in me. Well, it may just come out into you, but you need to stop it at the door and don't let it get out. You say, well, I can't help it. Don't. Uh, have you read the Bible lately? There is no temperament that you have that you can't correct. There's no habit that you have that you can't correct if you try it. Thirdly, holiness has to do with my humanness. We know him as both the mediator of divine grace and the model of human godliness. <clears throat> Another word for holiness is godliness. Pursuit of godliness. What is human godliness? This godliness that is true holiness as seen in Christ. It is simply human life. It is simply human life lived out as God intended. It is perfect and ideal humanness. I am a human. I'm human. I am a human person living out my humanness. Well, it should reflect Christ. Excuses doesn't work with God. It is an extension in which the elements of a human person completely unite in a totally God-honoring and a nature-filled way. It is finding myself uniting with God-honoring and nature-fulfilling ways. That's an imperative. An imperative is a command. That's holiness. You can't see God without holiness. 